everyone to um, our next session. Um, if you've been here all day, you've probably heard these same reminders in all the sessions, but please just make sure your cell phone ringer is turned off. Um, everyone needs a chair. It should not be a problem in this room. Um, they're sitting on the floor. Uh, if you plug in any devices, just be mindful of the wires and cords. Um, and Act 48 credits are still available this year, so if you have any questions about that, um, I can help you. I'll be in the back. My name is Ann. So welcome our presenters. Thank you, Ann. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before Bashi starts uh, our presentation, uh, we would like you guys to uh, get your smartphones or devices and uh, connect to our Kahoot uh, thing. It's just type like kahoot.it, and this is the pin. Because we're going to be making some quick questions to get to know uh, a little bit more about you regarding content and technological knowledge that is involved in our work. You can put like an alias or fake name or anything, it's good. Uh, in the end of the presentation, or after we get the results of Kahoo, we're gonna give some prizes, so do your best. <laughs> Welcome, Mike, CJ, great, great, great. I'm gonna take a PowerPoint now because it's kind of wrong. Great, great, everything is good. Bashir, I am ready. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Seven four six zero one three. Seven four six zero one two. How can we like let, let's like say that Anne, can you help us out with that? Let's say that some someone gets like later. So can you share this number with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Seven four six O oh, two one. <laughs> Josette is also here, so it's okay. Please remember your nicknames <laughs> because I don't know your nicknames. <laughs> All right, Bashir, good one, good job. Uh, oh, oh, okay. The Kahoot song is going on now. I 
I, I, I'm not a switch one, switch back person. Okay. Welcome everybody to our presentation about blending and switching with immersive VR. Uh, uh, I'm Bashir Sadat uh, from Lehigh University doing my master's in instructional technology. Uh, we built a, a project uh, during last summer with Junior that's gonna talk about. Okay, so hi everyone, uh, welcome again. My name is Junior, Robson Junior. Uh, I am a second year doctoral student in the PhD program teaching learning technology at the same uh, department as Bashir is. Uh, and last summer, just like you said, we had a inter internship at Lehigh. There is this experience, summer experience that whenever you have like a innovative idea or something that you are looking to develop and yeah, so there are professors that are uh, partnering with the students across levels so these ideas can come to life and even become courses. And they, at Lehigh, they created, they created and create courses. So the students stay with us in the summer. They are provided like a stipend and like accommodations and stuff. And then if they want to keep on building, they can enroll like for spring, fall, uh, to, to continue furthering the, pro the projects. This one only what I started summer and then, since I'm like I'm the doctoral student in this um, research group, and it's also related to my dissertation, so I was taking care of the baby un until next summer. Yeah, and also the this semester, some undergrad students are going to go work on it more on their across projects, so it's gonna go grow and build. Yeah, and yeah. The idea is that like these ideas should like people getting together and galvanizing and you know, so we can share and create these things so we can really uh, make our classrooms and schools more technologically uh, sound. You did that work with us, with all the professors, the state student groups, and uh, in the department of uh, instructional technology and also environmental science and also library and technology services. So it was a work of all the departments in the Lehigh University to create uh, such a uh, that we could work and create such a thing. Yeah. Uh, just to, re to remember, like, Brian and Henry, they were listed as presenters, but they are seniors, they are finishing, like, their course, so they couldn't come, and that's why I stepped in to, to be presenting with Bashir, but they are also, like, important, very important pieces, because they were the ones working together, and we were just, like, giving lots of crazy ideas, five faculty members, one uh, GIS specialist and everybody, oh, let's do that, oh, that's cool. And then they were, ooh, okay, okay, okay. But they pull it off and it's there. Yeah. So when we built uh, our work, the result is a realistic uh, VR environment of the Lehigh River watershed. So now we have a question from you guys. Yeah, so let's start our Kahoot session because we need to get to know to you guys. So are you ready? Uh, oh, whoa, 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 I'm not ready. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, presentation mode. This is not good. Yeah. If I close that, I I cannot get into presentation mode, otherwise it's not going to work. Ah, I'm going to restart. Restart. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, yeah, improvisation mode on if everybody is kicked out. Yes. Yay! If there's no nicknames here, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Oh my god, everybody automatically got the prize. Yay! <laughs> oh no, no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see you guys. But thanks to the technology. Was air. Oh man, I almost gave out lots of prizes. <laughs> <laughs> That's improvisation mode. It's a skill we gotta develop. So, do you know what a watershed is? Now you have the possibility to answer yes or no. Yes is the red triangle, and no, the uh, blue square. Yes. 
Anything else there, Coach Vaughn? Well, no problem. It's okay. So, I think, yeah, that's great. So, uh, so, just quickly for the ones who still are not aware, I wasn't because I'm, I speak Portuguese, I'm from Brazil, so, but what is watershed? And then because of the language transfer, and everything. okay, I know what a watershed is. A watershed is like uh, a main river that receives all the, the water streams from higher lands. In our case, in the water, Lehigh River watershed, uh, that is like straight here. We have this northern part is uh, going down towards uh, the, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Lehigh River watershed meets the Delaware River right here. And the funny thing, like modern nature, we have a nail for the Lehigh River, and that's great. So we're going to be talking about that. And thank you for the presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Going back to presentation. I don't want a presentation mode because yes, you can just use the regular phone. You just oh 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 too late. Okay, next slide. We need some artificial intelligence to help us. <laughs> <laughs> So our area of interest is that we are showing an immersive VRS on this watershed that the three cities which are here are Lintown, Bethlehem, and Eastern, uh, and also here the Lehigh Gap, which is this ridge and it's here the Lehigh Gap, and this northern part which is more the forest and rural area and also a city called Palmerton. Uh, so uh, this is our area of uh, interest and all of our project is happening in this area. Uh, which is uh, in the real uh, virtual paper that Junior is going to talk about it in the next slide. Yeah, the thing is like this area is super rich in terms of geography, history, and progre progress and development for the entire country. And it's there, like in the history and in the memory of the people. Mm -hmm. So, and it's so broad that we had to like focus for a beginning. And that's how we narrowed down like to the Lehigh Gap because it's a very interesting like, uh, you know, boundary in the Lehigh watershed. And also because we, most people are around this area, like it's about 650,000 uh, inhabitants in this uh, south urban area of the, the watershed. Uh, also here around here, we have the abandoned mine drainage streams that there are some uh, uh, old mines, right? There is still kind of, heavy metals going on the streams and this affects all the healthy uh, of the health of the watershed. So again, the content creeps because it's very interesting and rich. So we, we start with this starting point. Uh, we also built in the summer an immersive virtual field trip uh, at the Lehigh Gap, the exact place where there is an opening where the Lehigh River cuts, uh, cuts across uh, towards south. Uh, we uh, have for information. <coughs> this, this is Henry and this. Is oh yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are here. <laughs> so this is Henry, <laughs> Brian, is Scott, yeah. Doctor Bozzi, and Doctor Hammond are here as well. Probably I'm taking the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are taking the picture. <laughs> so just wait a second. I don't want to share duplication. No swap. No. What do you want to do? I want to end the live show. Yeah, this is not what I want to do. Kahoot time again. Let's move on. Get ready. If you want to get the prize, next. Oh, let's see who's Frank is here. Okay, Rob. Hey, I'm Rob as well. Have you ever been to the Lehigh Gap? Anyone know the Lehigh Gap? So we have a picture to help you. This is a picture where the Lehigh River cuts across the Kittatinny Ridge, and uh, it's rather beautiful. I've ever been there. That's a no. Ooh, I think most people have because thirteen like flat. Oh, good. Okay, you take the picture. So just again to illustrate, the Lehigh River watershed has this like central area kind of that is in the city of Palmerton with like there is a, 
we move sports around here, walnut sport, and uh, we have the Blue Mountain here, the and Blue Sea Sky here. Resort, right? Uh, and today, this is like from Google, uh, it, Google Maps 3D view from 2019, so it's very current. But this wasn't that green a couple of years ago. That's why wh uh, we decided to address this specific place as well in our first uh, piece of work with this project. Uh, regarding the watershed, the, I'm sorry, the Lehigh Gap, if I can, or point, please. So, regarding the Lehigh Gap, we have s lots of driving motivational um, you know, topics to start developing these investigations and inquiry-based uh, curriculum and things. But we decided to focus first, as a starting point, in the geography of the Lehigh Gap. Uh, not only what has happened recently and what it is, look like, what the, it looks like today, but also going back in time to like the eight, uh, 1800s, like 1890, uh, to show how it was before, like the colonization happened. Like people came to the Lehigh River to start like using the cities. Uh, we also are very interested to share to our students the history about this transportation hub that the Lehigh uh, River served like for the uh, coal transportation during the time of the zinc smelting production throughout Pennsylvania. And this uh, water gap was really like hot. Like we have more than hundreds uh, uh, rail, train rails, trips, back and forth. We also like the Lehigh River, they have dug canals in order to facilitate the transportation, so it's a lot of things. Here we have a, like a historic picture in which the train is the Black Diamond, Lehigh Valley, I guess, is still in operation, but anyway. Um, and also one more thing that we want to throw up there is that the Zinc Smoking Company, uh, we have a question about that. that yeah, so we are left, okay. Yeah, go left. Let's let's go to Slack. Oh, yeah. come with again. I'm sorry. It's no. too too much excitement to do stuff and then we're here. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Kahoo. Frank. Oh, Rob. Spy Williams. <laughs> you guys are good. So do you know what a super fun area is? It's worth a thousand points. We have a picture to help you out. I wish the song was on there for time. I don't know if you would have thought it for time. <laughs> the good thing about Tahoe is there's no problem getting wrong or right. We learn anyway. Oh, it's perfect. Ooh, that's interesting. So, instead of talking, I would like to have anyone that said yes to help us out. Like, share what you know about EPA, please. Um, well, in our area. I'm sorry, it's super fun. Yeah, what ended up happening in our area is we had a um, battery plant that leaked into the soil, mm -hmm. and all of the um, uh, yards, all of the yards and everything that was, I think they went maybe a foot or two down, and they had to dig up all the yards, take the soil away from, from the spots, from the area, and then they had to take it to a specific area in which it was. That's, that's interesting because uh, like we are working with this specific topic, but there are many super funds and we are, we are studying and specializing the one in uh, Palmerton, but this one is interesting like in terms of content knowledge. Yeah, it was in a residential area. Ooh. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it, it was a very dense populated area. So. Okay. Any, anybody else would you like to like say what a super fund is or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so super fund is an area that was uh, did, uh, um, assigned by the United States government right after uh, the EPA agency uh, was created, the Environmental Protection Agency, because they are uh, characterized as high priority 
to remediate or bioremediate. Just like our colleague said, when there is this kinds of like uh, environmental, you know, issues, either not, uh, that happen like because of progress and history, sometimes people didn't know or didn't have the knowledge, and it eventually happened. So after EPA came along, they listed the places and they flagged as like super fun. So there is funding, and also they have they need to abide to policy to recover the areas. So the Lehigh Gap turns out to be one of these ones because of the zinc smelting plant that was allocated at Palmerton, right in the, the bottom of the mountain. So what are you looking for here? All right, you can talk about this, this picture. Uh, this is the same pic place. This is uh, when the zinc smelting company was there. And that makes it because of the emotions that has and that grew in all of that area. And this is now, maybe like two years ago. Uh -uh. Like so Twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Yeah, but yeah. it's like it's a long process of yeah. revegetation because it, it involves research. Uh, the, the environment. Yeah. Involves research. That's right. But they are like there is a there is a website that is very interesting. It's uh, Next Succession, which I read this article. They are keeping track of the story of the high gap, and they they start right after like right in the beginning say. What kind of uh, work is being done, which is bioremediation of the area, and the status, it's ongoing, but it's about to end, because they, are, they already have done the implementation, the tests, and they took care of the area for like more than 25 years. There are uh, five EA and, uh, reports, which is also available in the EPA site, so you can see how this process uh, of bioremediation progressed uh, and they are waiting to see if they uh, meet the, the number that they want to prove like scientifically speaking by uh, scientific methods if the procedures that they did work and we are really hoping that it does I think the number is at least 60 percent of uh, independent succession so mother nature has to keep doing its job and then we will be uh, able to share the good news and hopefully healing, start healing the whole planet. Uh, so, next question. We're going to stop with the question quick, very soon. So, have you heard of the effects of the zinc smelting operation on the high gap environment? You kind of gave the answer. Yeah, no, no problem. Zinc smelting, what? So, zinc smelting was like a huge process of working with zinc and creating other heavy metals or materials to produce iron. So the story, history of Bethlehem Seal that we know because it's in Pennsylvania. There are other areas in Pennsylvania that also produced iron in the Second World War. So just like I said, it's, there are so many cool and very important historic things that are in this exact place. And nobody is addressing that. Why? So we said, let's do something. Okay. Oh, no, no. Oh, that, that's, that's good. You guys, good. You guys are going to learn what happened at the Lehigh Gap. Mm, yeah, mm, we did it once a time. So just like Bashir said, <laughs> like, spoil it. I, I did. Mm -hmm. This picture is the picture of the, uh, uh, like, looking north, because we are south. So looking north, the left. Uh, you know, ridge of the Lehigh Gap, which is facing to the zinc and smelting uh, factory, which was in the Palmerton City. So this was this. 2002, so it was 17 years ago. This was the result of the whole zinc smelting production when the plants were like fully operational. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys afterwards like a very nice study that describes com literally all the plants in Pennsylvania and how they were related, how they fed each other with like the, the zinc products, uh, the processes of zinc smelting, and then you're gonna learn about the numbers. It's, yeah, startling. However, let's see if this ne the next question is about that. Let's see, I think it is. 
So which of these products are uh, produced with zinc? Roofing panels, suspension bridges, air conditioners, air dryers, Like some people are feeling, just try, no problem. What are made out of zinc? What will zinc be used for? Oh, roofing panels. Okay, uh, the people who talked about the suspension of bridges, could you share a little bit what you know if we are on the same page? How come are suspension of bridges made out of zinc? Steel. Steel. Great, that's the basic idea. And we, we, we need to students to know that due to the importance of like economically de developing speaking. Steel, G, like I said as well, uh, this area of Pennsylvania exported steel massively during the war. So it was a kick towards progress in the area. Uh, hair dryers, one, it's true. Actually, everybody got it right because all of them have zinc at some level. Uh, okay, let's go back to the Oh, I got the wrong. Okay, my flag. Okay, so now that we finished these lacking questions because I closed the browser, the big question is Bashir. Why do you get that? It's another question that why are we focused on this area? and why we are trying to use the VR to teach all of these things about this area. So, Let me ask you another question. Now that I close Slack, let's start using old technology, yeah. current old technology. <laughs> How many of you guys are teachers in the classroom right now? Here. How many of you guys, can you notice the quota double quotation marks? Why, mister, or why, miss? Do you get to hear that in your classroom? So. Me too. I've been I've been the last three uh, sorry I've been the last year and a half uh, working uh, in a grant in a high school in Allentown, and I had never heard that because I was in Brazil. But it's the same kind of thing of working with a different language. And then like, why do, do all the students or most of them ask this question with this intonation? Why, Mister? So they don't, they see no point, and they are not totally wrong because. Everything is moving ahead. Everything is progressing, but then we're still offering. I'm not criticizing. I, I'm a teacher as well, like 12 years already. And we sometimes we keep like traditional book base or memorization and stuff that we know when we have been studying. We are here for that. We are the ones that are trying to do this step ahead. So, what? Why? I ask you why. Because we want to answer this question that these students are making constantly. Why? Why should I do this? Or why this activity? Why? Then I don't see any connection or you know, feasible explanation why. So the answer will start right after. Bashir. Maybe you can just speak. This is this has been taken only all these shots, these step shots were taken from this uh, documentary or this news documentary from PBS News Hour. And they were in a school. Like these students are using technology, great. They have their own devices, great, but none of them are using like for educational purposes. Most of them are like on Instagram or taking photos. Right. Using those filters and stuff. And they are not engaged with the class most of the time. They are just doing their own stuff. It's just, so we have a new war. Now you know that. We have a new war. Because we are there. We have planned. We want the, the best for them. Because we, we want them to succeed and thrive. But we are constantly losing them. So, and here the numbers. Uh, these students, they were interviewed uh, by Pew Research Center. 92% go online every day. It's everybody does, and there are a, a fourth of them like go online almost constantly. So now we have another video to start showing you why we started using virtual reality as the tool. Oh great, I, I closed that. I guess we have. 
is to when is your Google Chrome? set up like open the last tabs that were open when you close the browser or is it going to be blank? Blank. blank. Okay, let's see if we can control shift T. It's copied. It's not I'm trying to reopen all of them because I closed them at all at once. I guess I'm overloading it. Oh, yay, there it is. So, let's take the time to use some shortcuts. Whenever this kind of thing happens in your classroom, don't despair. There are shortcuts. So, uh, when you close the browser with all the tabs that open, actually in Google Chrome, because I don't use any other, and I'm not, I don't work for Google, if you hold Control, Shift, and hit T, it's going to reopen all the previous tabs. Let's say that you are working and then you close one tab accidentally. You can re uh, resuscitate that tab by hitting Control Shift T. Okay, but I don't know why. You can close the other one because that's one of the tabs there. Yeah, that's why it's taking too much time. Yes. No. No, 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 no. Maybe we are overloading the connection. I don't know. If you stop one of them. It's coming. It's coming. Who is that? We already finished. Oh, everybody won, and I won with all the prizes. Mm -hmm. I need. <laughs> thank Unless you. Yes, you finished this one. It's okay. I need to do this one. Oh. Or maybe I can improvise again. There's no planning ahead. We had four plans. And the fifth thing is happening. You That's right. So you don't have to leave it on the bottom to keep my head. No, I don't. Come back, come back. No, no, no. No, wait, wait. You're doing fine. Go, go, go. So let's take the time of the blank pages. So far, is everything okay? Do you guys have any kind of question about like the ideas, the driving ideas, the location? We are not at really high watershed now, but we are in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has lots, I, I think, yeah, lots of watersheds. Um, and yeah, we're back because I started talking. Good. So, I am from Brazil, and I didn't know about that, which is great. And what is more interesting is that they are doing things that we want to do here in our research group at Lehigh. So I'm going to show this video. It's just one minute and 50 seconds. So these meninos hoje se conectam com o mundo por meio de tecnologia. Por que a escola vai ficar fora disso? Os meninos hoje se conectam com o mundo por meio de tecnologia, porque a escola vai ficar fora disso. E a tecnologia ajuda a gente a tirar a sala de aula da escola. O projeto Observando os Rios surgiu em São Paulo por conta da poluição dos rios, que é absurda. Aí a gente pensou, ah, como é que a gente pode limpar essa água? Sei lá, talvez transformar ela em potável e começar a usar na escola. Esse processo inicia-se com as visitas até ao córrego Congonhas, que é um córrego muito próximo da escola. Tem a análise física, que é para poder analisar cheiro, odor. E tem a parte química, que quando a gente coleta água, analisa, para a gente ter registrado. 
tinha uma antena parabólica que a escola não usava mais, que servia perfeitamente para o projeto. Essa antena, hoje ela serve para limpar essa água suja que a gente coleta do córrego. A gente focou todo o calor do sol num único lugar, que era o prisma. A água escorre nas paredes do prisma e ocorre um processo de condensação. E aí, através de uma mangueira, ela solta ali de um recipiente onde a água já está limpa. Nós temos uma estufa grande na escola, então os alunos utilizavam essa água para plantio de alface, rúcula. Tem gente que acha que a tecnologia afasta a responsabilidade dos alunos, pelo contrário. Ele, através da tecnologia, desenvolve ferramentas para salvar essa água. Conforme você vai se apegando ao rio e à situação, você quer fazer alguma coisa a mais. Eu quero que esse projeto cresça muito, que é São Paulo Limpa para as outras gerações. Sair do micro e ir para o macro. Som. We know, like, that not every school or school district has the chance of going out on field trips or offer technology or have this kind of projects. I don't know the school. I, I'm not from São Paulo. I'm from the United States. And, but what caught my attention is the fact they are, besides using technology and developing STEM projects, they are really going outside and trying to save the river and the streams. Mm -hmm. That this area in Sao Paulo, I know, like the Tietê River, is just like a total 100% lost lot. And the students are getting more committed and engaged to help the environment. So these uh, values are being developed at, at school. Another thing that I would like to call your attention to is that how easy it is to be organized and go on a field trip and like provide those white uh, jackets and materials for you to collect pro uh, water probes and create a, so a thing that cleans water. So it's not that close to our reality because there's bureaucracy and things like that. That's why we want to use technology, especially virtual technology, because we can have everything in, inside the classroom. Right, what you think? Yes, we can. Uh, we know that uh, in the first picture, it's really true that the engagement period is not enough uh, for the classes because the traditional ways of uh, teaching in field theory is not engaged and the students are not enough excited about we improve uh, uh, immersion by engagement, motivation, and content learning. And also, one of the things that's good about the virtual environments is that you put students in an immersive environment that you break each pieces of them. You can incorporate diversity, culture, and role many models. Uh, role models that they even, they just notice it, but they, they don't tell them that this is how it is, mm -hmm. but they learn from it. They go there and they see different people from different cultures. They go there in the environment and they experience a new culture without even you seeing it. Your task is, for example, you tell them to go there, it's a, just a scavenger hand to find something, but they go there and see different things. And in their mind, you just like teach them uh, in an indirect way, which is very strong and very, uh, very uh, it's mean that it's uh, effective. Uh, about the accessibility features, you know, is very passionate about that. Uh, we, when we work, like we should always remember that we have like a very broad uh, range of, you know, students and like, our clients. We need to plan and teach and provide the same learning experience as much as possible to all of them. So it's not about like, oh, I have to build this just for those students and this only just for that student. No. I attended a conference last semester and I learned something very interesting from a PhD student. He said that games and video games, this kind of like um, uh, virtual uh, reality technologies, which video gaming is related, they should be accessible by default. You do not make a game accessible. We have to change the, you know, the thinking process. Games must be accessible by nature, not you're making something become accessible. Because just by having this approach, you already you have a kind of like not it's different, and that's not what we are trying to do. We are trying to offer the same experience, and as developers or content makers or innovators, educators, 
we have lots of things and you know how our brain works we do stuff uh, let's see but she will talk about this process of creating now so at the start of project this this was our goal dr Bazen, which is leading this project he's very passionate about these things say that artistry reality and engagement for the students uh, so we started to we use a process which is called design process. Using this design process, we oh, design thinking. Oh, so I can do. How many of you know about design thinking? Let's go to back to Kahu. I can, can have it on the wall. Okay, we just ask. How many know? We, we don't go to Kahu anymore. There's no Kahu anymore. Everybody yeah. wants. So, anyone knows about design thinking? Almost everybody knows now about design thinking. So, we use this the process of design thinking to process uh, to uh, design and develop this, this project. Uh, we started by empathy to learn about our users. The most important thing in, in the design thinking process is the user, that we learn about their needs. So we are working with, uh, with the building 21 in Allentown with the uh, school district that we learn about them that how uh, they learn and we connected with one of the classes uh, to learn about these students that what is their needs. And then we started to define our world that I will show in the other uh, image that how we define our world and then we ideate and created many different ideas of how we are going to do it. It took a long process, right? Uh, and then we prototype. We had two lots of prototypes, lots of prototypes and finally we uh, still it's, we are in the process of, uh, in the process of prototyping and each prototype is better than the older one and it's it's going to be a better. And our testing, we also test this with the same users. We yeah. tested this many times and still it's going Last on. summer as well, they, yeah. Yeah, they came. The yeah. Last summer they came to our workstations and the place that we were working and they tested. And these students were amazed with the thing that we did. They were in, inside and it was like full of bugs and glitches yeah. and stuff. Yeah, at that time it wasn't that the thing, the same thing that we have it now, but it's still they were like, wow. Let, let me say something, but she, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we are always talking about design thinking. There are there are other sessions going on about design thinking. Are we just gonna like uh, buzzword bingo? Design thinking, empathy, prototype, and do nothing about that? No, we are adults and we know that we should be very like effective and very productive as much as possible. So in our presentation, we are really focusing and we have been focusing on the empathy uh, moment, like that is like getting to know our audience, we are remember ourselves, uh, reminding ourselves, we are building for them, not for me, because it's school, because it's virtual reality, because I like to play video games. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. about that thing, uh, I, I wanna, one of the things that developers always throw in the trap, because they think that they are smart, they think about very good stuff in their mind and start building, they, they don't really think about their user. This is very a trap that most of the developers, the designers, they go in. They because just I love like yeah, oh my class they know yeah. many technologies, many cool things. Say that let's put this, let's put this. Do you really you know you need those things? And the thing is that the focus should not be the, the media or the technology. The learning and the experience of the user should be the focus. Of. So we first start on the user, and then we build for that user. Not we focus on the technology or the tool to to give them that. Yeah, come on, this tool is cool, you have to use it. No. Do we, do we really need this tool or not? So this is just very important. Uh, our time is running because we get excited and that's normal in presentations, but this is the takeaway we want you guys to take from the design thinking, uh, you know, trend or thread of this presentation. Nobody knows everything. It's important to be perfect. Perfection doesn't exist. These are something that we learn throughout life. So. Instead of building things according to standard, oh, it should be there. Oh, I have to learn this, this, that, that, the programming languages. What for? Are you gonna be using them somehow? So, there's this new trend of like being, like solving problems, which is some also 21st century skills. So, I, uh, I'm also gonna share with you guys uh, an article that has just been written like yesterday by Nathan Slaughter in that uh, uh, medium.com, it's like a place that we can read stuff. He, said, he shared his 
story that he was spending like his entire youth learning how to program, but he has never deployed and had his products being used or helping people, and he's feeling like bad about that. And at the same time, he had a, a colleague that didn't study as much as he did, and he says, I knew twice as more as he, my colleague knew. Uh, and the colleague worked for Microsoft, did lots of things, are uh, helping people, and then, then he starts wondering, okay, so I haven't done my thing yet, and I know so much. So that's, that's like an analogy. So much content for what? We need to prioritize the strategies, like the learning search to achieve the goals. That's why we have so many standards. Like they are like guidelines. Find the objectives and the learning goals you wanna achieve, and then start thinking like, what can I do? And well, oh, these students are gonna be great doing that. And then you, 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 you know, model your class. Uh, we're gonna share afterwards because we gotta run. We have to show you guys the, the game. Uh, this is the storyboard. This is the storyboarding that we used one of the design thinking process that we used. That this is like a practice of software engineers that they use this process to know the steps that they are gonna have in the in their game or in their environment. So we use this first to like kind of map that what we are gonna do that we already have these things in our game. Now. Another current trend that is like changing and we experience that on the go is that storyboarding and like the importance of telling a compelling story is also something that is across disciplines in the curriculum. And then we as a graduate students, researchers, developers, people, uh, educators work like, with what should we do? We do this because we, we have studied about that, but like everybody should do that, otherwise they won't be like fully, you know, productive adults because uh, there's another like trend of people like, oh, I know so much, I have so many diplomas, but if they don't have people skills or they don't know how to convey their message, it's not gonna happen. So we have to be start like, that's to be focused and strategical, uh, strategically working towards our goals. Our goal was like to offer some alternative for students and uh, we start getting to work. The nitty gritty, every, the thing that everybody is afraid of. Did you know how to use any of these before, Bashir? Oh, no, this is the point that the junior talked about that in the, in the article that was written today, that we just start by solving problems. I didn't know about Unity that much. I just like did one, one week class. I didn't know about coding. I didn't know about all of these other softwares that we use for this project. In the, in the, in the course of summer, I learned about all of these softwares and pieces of the, the things that you see there with other two other undergraduate students. We learned all of them, we found about them. Some of the pieces we bought, some of them we learned to we had a learning curve and then we used them all in a project and the project came up. So mm -hmm. the, the, the main weapon, like the important stage is Unity because Unity is the, one of the most used game engines. So it's a program that is built by producing games. But Unity is so uh, comprehensive that people are making like immersive virtual uh, animated movies with Unity because there is the animation component. And th there is also cuddle type, very re realistic uh, scenarios and interior design things so they can showcase and run uh, simulations of a, a client going to that place. So Unity is like very open for uh, creativity uh, fostering and problem solving and we are, we have been solving our problem with unity and we're gonna share you guys uh, show you guys how to start doing that first uh, unity is for free so let me just uh, advance one slide here there are lots of like uh, tiers but there's always that free tier that you can use in this case uh, Unity allows you to download the personal version, which is the same complete version of the program, as long as you make up to a thousand hundred dollars a year. I, I, do you make a hundred thousand dollars? So as a teacher, <laughs> like, so we are we can use Unity forever until we really become very great developers and start making money. Uh, 
I don't know. After 100,000, I think they just take a percentage. I don't, actually, this I don't know because like, I'm still in this beginning <laughs> for education only. And let's share and let's help the world. Yeah. So for, uh, they also have something called the Unity Club that you have it in the other slide. No, I will oh, it's here. It's yeah. here. Yeah, it's here. So the, the thing is that for free, they can make you use, uh, I don't know, for two free. months. You free can, match. Uh, for three people, they can work on the same project. If I don't know if you guys know about GitHub, which is a kind of version controlling system for developers. This one here has let the developers work in different PCs at the same time and upload their works at the same time. And also it, it does the version controlling system for, the, for you that you don't lose your work and you can understand. Sometimes there is a lot of that when you work, but you can always go back okay. and, uh, and restore your work, and which is really cool. I really love it. Uh, it was amazing. Our emphasis. Yeah. Did we know about GitHub and service manager, whatever version? No. no. So we learned, so we learned about that <laughs> on the go because we need to solve this problem. And then Unity also has, all, as well as all the other kind of software and websites, they offer documentation, which is part of the uh, project management yeah. best practices. So yeah. if you want to learn something, it's all listed here and in other websites. Our project also started with uh, documentation in the summer. That's this slide. Bashir has created like the first version. Yeah. But as I took on, I started using Slack because I can create the channels. Slack is like closed now. I can create the channels and then I can have different users in different channels, like some students that I'm advising, some uh, colleagues that I'm working with, our advisors, people that are interested, like you guys, if you want to get to know in the loop, see what we are doing, learn together, you can be added to our Slack, the lehighvr.slack.com, and then start learning and working and sharing ideas. That's the current thing of education. We have to change, exchange info. Uh, going back because we just have 10 minutes, uh, they also have the unit asset store, as well as like, there are many repositories nowadays of 3D objects, and unit asset store, it, it, it's even more. They have uh, objects, they have entire scenarios, they have characters animated, they have tools for developing, just like we are working with the Oculus. We have to develop like the, uh, I'm sorry, to download and use the device uh, drivers, the drivers for running a specific device with the thing you're creating. And then it's for free. They are always updating. They are always letting you know how to do it. There are many tutorials on YouTube, on their websites. You just have to, you know, find your way and get the information. We, us as educators, you guys as educators are people that want to make the change, our role is to select and combine. This is a sentence from Susan Bassnett, like translation studies 20 years ago when I was in college. But this is the, one of the universal laws. We select what is best and what it works, and we combine, and then we put it in a good place. So, uh, I gotta go fast. Now, teachers be like, hashtag, that stuff in my classroom, we developed for uh, Vive, ATC Vive, ATC Vive, because we, uh, we high had it, uh, and then we, yeah, we, we have to work morning. with the tools yeah. we have in our school. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out that it's very bulky, it's wired, and we need a very powerful computer, and there are the lighthouses that needs to do the scanning. So Vive is mm, it's not good for our need, our problem. And then I started thinking and I said like, mm, we need to do something about that because the teachers are almost throwing stones at us. They are not gonna listen to us. And then I went to California last semester to the Oculus Convention to learn about it and get to know. And then I ran this uh, rough drafting budgeting to see how can we make like a larger implementation in a real school classroom environment. Uh, here are the VR setups. So. With Vive, if you want to have five devices, which means just five students, uh, it's gonna be, oh, it's not, oh, uh, just the Vive thing, $2,500. And then you have to buy the, the computer that is VR ready more. 
So in the grand total, if you want to have even like with no wire, you're gonna be spending around uh, $8,000 for five devices only, or $16,000 for 10 devices. No. Oculus uh, is working with like a new uh, mobile technology that is the Oculus Go, but she's gonna show you guys. Besides being like standalone, you don't need a computer. It's the almost the same quality. You get the immersion, you are there, you can reproduce realism and stuff. It's easy to put like, but she just put like, and he didn't yeah. need help. When we are like test driving with the students, just like in the previous slide, it's hard. It take like, I take 10 minutes and I work with that every day because I need to take care of the person. I, 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 it's the face, it's very sensitive. sensitive. So I said, no, let's, tr we gotta improve this plan. And I hope the teachers will not say that stuff in my classroom again. Why? Because like with uh, these two, uh, 2,500, we like with $400 or $2,000, uh, $2, we can buy many more devices of this goal. Imagine with $2,000, 10 students having the immersive virtual reality uh, experience at the same time. Oh, but it's not that we have 30 students. So to have three rotations or, you know, have people work in groups. There's another thing. Oculus Go allows you to screencast the experience to your cell phone. So they are already developing and like other developers that make content for it, experiences that need to have a co-pilot in the, web, uh, the smartphone. So for us educators, like making scavenger hunts or quests and like, but she would be on the headset, but I need to guide him to find the things he needs to find there in the virtual world in order to um, be successful and complete the goal. These slides are the prototype and the current version of what we have. Uh, this is the tutorial room. Oh, it's too fast, too fast. Go back up, uh, very quick. Five minutes, five minutes. <laughs> tutorial room, this is the latest version. We have created a, a room, uh, and uh, we are telling the story that we want to tell about the revegetation of the Lehigh Gap. This is the uh, 2002 when it was bad. This is the germination that started to happen in 2003. And this is a, a picture of the mountain in 2007. This is gonna be uh, one of the virtual tutors that is gonna be talking and interacting with the students so the students can learn how to play, how, what, get to know what to do. He'll be like instructed to about the, the, the contest of the story of the Lehigh Gap to get engaged and want to be discovering these mysteries. Uh, go, go, go. This is the current iteration of the menu. We are putting lots of accessibility features like text size, uh, we are also working like with captions. Students, we have lots of uh, language learners and students that don't even speak English in classroom. This is all in Unity. You're yes. designing in Unity. This is all in Unity. Uh, do, you any, do you want to say anything else? I'm running, I'm sorry, we can talk no about it. Just wanted to confirm. Okay, great. Yeah. But she go back, go back, go back, please, please. So, voice audio as well because voiceover also helps like content uh, engaging and learning. Uh, and we also have uh, already developed, but it's nothing because this is a, an older version, the high contrast mode. So there is high contrast mode, light version and dark version, so the student can change or whatever user can change to be best fit their needs or like whatever makes that even more comfortable for them. Go Bashir, go, go, go. This is an older version of the tutorial room. So prototyping, we are prototyping, prototyping. This is the map from the Lehigh Valley. It's a real scale map. It's like 40 square kilometers. 80 to 80. So it's a huge site. And there are some interesting points, like this is like a location game. We have Building 21, the school here, and other places on the Lehigh Gap by the Lehigh River. And we have to fly by, get to know the place. So we are also working with geospatial uh, reasoning and like thinking uh, and especially like getting students to know about their cities because it's so like current life is so crazy we are always indoors and with computers they don't know places they just go to school home school home they don't know the places so 
This kind of experience allows them to get to know the area, the entire city, and other places. Ah, man, okay. So, uh, uh, we thank you very much, and we would like to let you know that although we didn't have time to compress and show everything, we are still working on that. We have lots of suggestions on how to get it started since the beginning until this level. Uh, the mindset we could share, don't freak out about learning how, uh, oh, program, no, go fix your problem. Go type on Google or YouTube, how do I do that? There are a hundred tutorials about that and choose your best uh, tutorial and then you learn it. Uh, I, I would like you to invite you to go to our Slack page, which is, it's not here, but it's Lehigh. Uh, let me write. Lehigh is just big questions, but she asked for questions while you're here. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any question about uh, the development and the way that we did it, then let us know. You guys can always connect with us on the Slack or on Zoom. You, you can just email us with our emails. Uh, we'd be happy to help on that with that, yeah. So in this, le the Lehigh is like, uh, Lehigh, oh Jesus. Lehighprslack.com. Really? I'm using a touchpad. I'm not, I'm not a touchpad guy. How do you make a small phone? Just need the control and the. So, so uh, Lehigh, she yeah. take my email. Our main, main point is here that. You guys can do it. It doesn't mean that you guys don't have the, all the, the, the skills. You guys have it. You just have to start and so start with a problem that you guys want to show it in the VR. And there you are. That's and not only you guys, the students as well. Get your students to work with you because they are very savvy and like they know more than us already because they watch more YouTube than us because we work more than them. And then, we can work together, create groups, and it's a whole new level. Do you have the various school districts around helping out, doing 360 VRs, monitoring the water in their area? I, I don't know uh, about that because we are really focused on starting the development, and we have the partnership with the Lehigh Nature uh, Center at the Lehigh Gap. I want you to have this shell, maybe. No, there's not going to be shell because we are really high. So our goal is always to disseminate. Just like we are here, it it hasn't been even one year, and we have this uh, uh, you know results, and we are here because we want you guys to get together, share, and uh, be able to be the change and make the change as well. Okay, so get in touch that we can communicate and work together. And work. Thank you. Thank you for coming. The prizes! I forgot about the prizes. Where are the prizes? Give everything you have.